Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashutosh Garg. I work as a solution provider with Furnace Improvements. In March this year, our company completed 25 years in fire heater business in the US. Uh, we are conducting free fire heater training webinars this year as a part of our Silver Jubilee celebration. Welcome to today's training session on steam methane reforming furnaces. Uh, we have a full house. We have received more than 120 registrations. And I thank you all for your time and interest. Uh, today's webinar is going to be for uh, 90 minutes. Uh, so please, and it's an interactive webinar. So please keep on sending your questions all the time. And we will uh, uh, try to answer them, maybe not in the this session, but maybe in the next session. So let me start our webinar. So, okay. So we are going to be talking about steam methane reformer furnace. It's a very unique heater. It's a only heater or one of the very few heaters which has catalyst filled inside the tubes and those catalyst tubes are surrounded by flames all around it's a very special heater we are going to be focusing on this heater today so let's go and get you started let's have a couple of questions to understand and we want to talk about what is the most common element in our universe so the choices are silicon oxygen carbon and hydrogen so we want to see what is the most common element and most of you have answered correctly Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe and even in our solar system. Uh, approximately 70% of the matter in this universe is hydrogen and it is followed by helium, 27%. So 97% of the material is hydrogen and helium. So let's see what is the situation on our Earth. What is the most common element on our Earth? Our options are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and silicon. So, Majority of you got it right. The correct answer is oxygen. We have oxygen in abundance at about 46% and it is followed by silicon, which is 27%. So combine about 73% is the two elements on this earth and oxygen is needed because we want to breathe oxygen and that's why we have life at on our planet so let's move on uh, what is the hydrogen content by weight on this earth how much hydrogen is present i mean Everybody is talking about hydrogen, so I want to see how much hydrogen is really present in our Earth. Is it 10%, 1%, 3%, or 0.15%? Uh, most of you got it correct. We have only 0.15% of hydrogen by weight. 
and as you see all the time we are talking about hydrogen economy we are talking about using hydrogen to power our entire world actually so hydrogen has all become suddenly like a blue eyed element or blue eyed gas everybody is talking about hydrogen but hydrogen is very rare actually if you think about it hydrogen is very rare so let's talk about the next thing now we are talking of steam methane reforming right so let's see how much hydrogen is present in methane by weight right we want to extract hydrogen from methane so let's talk about how much hydrogen is there is it 70 percent is it 50 25 what is the and i believe most of you will get it right actually well almost all of you got it correct it's 25 percent so 25 percent of methane is actually hydrogen and 75 percent is carbon and this it is this carbon which we are concerned about we are concerned about carbon carbon dioxide the greenhouse gas emission because when whenever we are going to be manufacturing hydrogen we will have this unnecessary baggage which we don't want in form of carbon carbon dioxide carbon monoxide whatever you methane you know all these greenhouse gas emissions are going to be so we have a very tough task ahead of us that how to produce hydrogen using steam reforming and at the same time take care of carbon where does all this carbon dioxide is going to go actually and that's going to be pretty much like 75 percent of the methane is carbon content and when it combines with oxygen it goes even higher you know and the other element which we are talking about is water right we used steam methane reforming so steam is water let's talk about how much hydrogen is there in water you have to remember one thing hydrogen is very light it has a molecular weight of two well majority of you still got it right it's only 11 percent 89 percent of water is oxygen so to all my colleagues who are talking of producing hydrogen by electrolysis we will be only making 11 percent by weight of hydrogen using electrolysis and electrolysis requires a lot of energy a lot of electrical energy so it is not going it is not going to be common currently maybe in future it may become economical so uh, now that i have your attention and we are into the webinar let me introduce myself i am a chemical engineer i passed out in 1974 from iit kanpur in india I started my career in an ammonia plant, which had a steam methane reformer, top source, held a top source steam methane reformer, side-fired furnace. Then in 1976, I moved to KTI, and KTI has been manufacturing steam reformers, is the leading supplier of steam reformers. I worked in KTI, I worked in Ingenious India, then KTI Corporation in US. Since 1996, I've been working with furnace improvements. Uh, one of the jobs which I did 
several years ago was being a consultant to Raytheon and working with them on the largest tea methane reformer in the world. I think it had almost like 1800 tubes. Really, really big reformer. I've also worked on a hydrogen handbook for a major hydrogen plant operator. That was all several years ago. But what we want to talk about is that we have a contrarian approach. We have a challenging approach. We have always questioned why we are doing some things which we are doing. You know, Why are we designing it like that? We always challenge and try to find out if there is a better way. You know, That's what our whole approach is about. So that's what we want to talk about. So let me tell you a little bit about furnace improvements. Furnace improvements pays my salary, pays our bills. So we have to give it a couple of minutes before we resume. Uh, <clears throat> furnace improvement started in 1996 with a mission to improve performance of existing fire heaters. Since then, we have been focused on revamping fired heaters, increasing their capacity, run length, efficiency. We have been reducing NOx emissions on several heaters. We have three patents on improving performance of fired heaters. We have three offices. We have a team of about 35 engineers and designers. We take projects on turnkey basis. We also have a CFD office, which we opened it in 2014. It's in Pune. We are one of the few heater companies with its own CFD modeling office. We also want to take this opportunity to thank all our customers for their business and support. You know, and uh, we take pride in doing very high quality technical work, keeping schedule, do it once, do it right. So. Uh, <clears throat> I also want to take this opportunity to thank our team in New Delhi for working on this presentation. This presentation, this Kahoot, uh, is all because of the hard work put in by our team. I'm just the front end or I'm just the one who is presenting it today, but they are the ones who developed all the content for us. Thank you, team. Uh, you did an excellent job. So uh, our initial plan was to have four sessions, and we will still have four sessions. And what we did was we broke it into four parts. Like in the first session, we will talk about uh, introduction, reaction kinetics, reformer catalyst. In the second one, we were going to talk about radiant section, catalyst tubes, convection section. Third one, we are planning to cover burners, refractory, stack, etc. The last session, we will cover NOx emissions, reforming heater operations, and troubleshooting. So this was basically what our plan, but let's see what we have for you. Uh, so I want to ask all of you, what are the operational issues in your steam methane reformers? Like, are you facing issues of methane slippage, hot spots, flame impingement, high tube metal temperatures? So, Well, we got uh, quite a few responses. Some have high methane slippage, some have hot spots. Hot spots and high tube metal temperatures are basically the same thing, I should say. Flame impingement. And if you see, most of these issues are related to combustion. And we will cover all that in the next thing. Uh, here is something more we want to talk about. What are the maintenance issues in your furnaces? <clears throat> what we have received? We 
maybe you are replacing your tubes every two, three years or five years, or you are having refractory failures, uh, pigtail damage. So most of the people are concerned about tube life. I think <clears throat> what I feel is tubes have become like a consumable. Like every three years, people just dutifully replace the tubes, you know, without going into root cause analysis. That's typically what happens. Okay, let's. You can also talk about the design issues. If you have any design, like you are having short tube life, you are having methane slip, you are limited on capacity, and uh, or if you are having problems with the burners, so so it's basically the major majority of the people are worried about short tube life, capacity limitations. Uh, methane slip and burners are again uh, this thing. Uh, some of the major design issues with the steam methane reforming furnaces. So we had asked during the registration process to submit us the operational issues with your steam reforming furnaces. What do you want us to cover in this webinar? And we got such an overwhelming response from all of you. So thanks to all the participants who sent us number of topics. I mean, I don't want to repeat all these things, but we have a whole slate of issues which we will be using it for covering in our future webinars. So we got almost like 300 responses from all of you. We had asked three questions to each of you. So basically we got three, you know. So similarly, these are other operational issues with SMR furnaces, NOx emissions, hotspots. So tons of issues which you have presented to us and we will be looking at them, evaluating them, and covering them. So basically, we want to cover what you want to hear. That's what our uh, aim is, that to be relevant. Otherwise, we won't be relevant, you know. Uh, so we have all these topics which have been submitted by you. So we will be including all the answers to all these questions. Well, another thing what we have started doing is posting answer to these questions on our Facebook page and on LinkedIn page. So please uh, join the list and you will see we, our team has posted a lot of answers from our previous webinars. So it's going to be a really, really uh, good uh, source of information. That's what we want to, on our social media pages, I want to ask you, where is your SMR located? Are you, do you have a hydrogen plant? Do you have an ammonia plant? Yeah, we have SMR in methanol plant, or you may not even have an SM, SMR actually, you may be belonging to a design and engineering company or a consulting company. So We just wanted to get a poll actually where our participants are covering. So, well, 50% don't have an SMR, but we have 1% from ammonia plant, one from methanol, and four from hydrogen plant. So hydrogen plant is a uh, major use of steam methane reformers. So generally, the steam methane reformers are classified or you know quantified by the number of tubes. If, because if I know the number of tubes, I will know approximate 
processing capacity of your reformer. Uh, so the small reformers are up to 150 tubes, 150 to 300 tubes are uh, medium size. They are all on the small size. Uh, the larger ones are around 600 tubes. So it's basically the catalyst volume which is controlling the capacity. And if you want to note down, typically each tube is a, has a processing capacity of 4,500 SCFH of syngas. That's typically the capacity of one catalyst tube. So if you know you have got 600 tubes, you just multiply and that way it will give you a capacity of your reforming furnace. Well, thank you for your responses. Uh, well, let's talk about steam methane reformers. It's a heart of four petrochemical plants. We're talking of ammonia, we're talking of methanol, hydrogen, and even in sponge iron metallurgical plants, we have SMRs located. Ammonia plants produce syngas for ammonia production from SMR. Methanol also produce syngas, a different syngas for methanol production. Hydrogen plants produce SM, uh, hydrogen from this SMR. Uh, so uh, approximately methanol is, we are producing almost 12 million tons of methanol using syngas every year. And ammonia quantity is almost like 180 to 200 million tons per annum. So it's a lot and lot of ammonia. So where is the ammonia used? So ammonia has a lots and lots of uses. Uh, the major one is fertilizers. Urea is the most common fertilizer what we use. Then we have ammonium sulfates, ammonium phosphates. You know, uh, we have use of ammonia for synthetic fibers like caprolactam, nylon 6, raw material for nylon. So lots and lots of use of ammonia are there. Ammonia is also used for making ammonium nitrate, which is an explosive. So uh, ammonia is a very, very important raw material. In fact, 50% of the steam methane reformers plants are basically ammonia plants. So ammonia have ammonium nitrate, ammonium phosphate, nitric acid, hydrazine, acrylonitrile, so lots and lots of uses of ammonia. Ammonia is also responsible for green revolution, you know, in the world actually. Uh, chemical formula of ammonia is NH3. You can see the structure. We have got one nitrogen atom and it's combined with three hydrogen, three single bonds. And the molecular weight is 17. It's a colorless gas with a pungent smell. And ammonia is manufactured using nitrogen and hydrogen using Haber's process. Nitrogen is produced by two routes. The one which I'm showing over here is secondary reforming. And the second route is separating it from air liquefaction. I mean, you liquefy air and then you use a liquid nitrogen as a source of nitrogen. And hydrogen is still mostly produced by steam reforming. So once we have the nitrogen and hydrogen, now we can mix it and produce ammonia. 
So production of ammonia is highly energy intensive. The number I have is 6.6 .6 gigajoule per ton. So a lot of lots of energy is needed for producing ammonia. The reaction is nitrogen plus three hydrogen gives two molecules of ammonia. It's a Haber process, ammonia synthesis loop. Uh, it's a very high pressure process. I mean, the plant in which I used to work 40 years ago, the ammonia synthesis was carried out at 300 atmospheres, almost like 4,000 PSI. There were plants even which had even 600 atmospheres. Although uh, in the last 30, 40 years, there have been a tremendous improvement in catalysts. And as a result of this catalyst, now we are able to generate ammonia at much lower pressures, almost like 100 or 150 atmospheres. It's still high, but it, you know, it is much, much better. The catalyst which is used is iron catalyst. It's an exothermic reaction. So we do have some heat generation, waste heat production is there. So let's talk about the second. And here, I want you to type your answer. This is a little different type of thing. Please type your answer. What are the uses of methanol in the industry? Methanol is also a very important material. I mean, in India, the methanol was used as a spirit. And whenever you would have a cut, you would apply methanol, you know. So, so we got several responses. The ones which I had was tariff slate, DMT, methylamines, MTB, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is the major use, 50% of methanol is used in formaldehyde. And formaldehyde is the one which basically makes laminates. If you heard of decolam and all those different laminates, that's where basically the formaldehyde is used for making these laminates. So there is a little difference, minor difference in these steam reformers. Uh, in methanol, we need not only hydrogen, we also need CO. And we need CO in the ratio of, we. I mean, we produced a ratio of one is to two, but what is produced from steam reformers is typically one is to three. So we add some CO2 to consume the additional hydrogen. And methanol market is almost 20, seven billion dollars a year. So it's it's a pretty big market actually. The uses we just talked about formaldehyde, uh, uh, MTB and TAME are the anti-knocking agents in the gasoline. Uh, DMT is again a plastic raw material and methylamines. So these are some of the chemical formula for methane is CH3 OH, molecular weight 32. It's also known as methyl alcohol, colorless volatile liquid with pungent order, chemical building block produced from carbon monoxide and hydrogen, again, in the presence of catalyst. So these are the two reactions we have in the for producing methanol, CO plus 2H2 makes CH3OH. And we can also use CO2 plus 3H2 making methanol, you know, and water vapor. Uh, we use copper or zinc oxide, aluminum oxide, as like this thing, the reactions are exothermic. So methanol has several uses for in the industry. Let's talk about the hydrogen. What are the major uses of hydrogen in the industry? Uh, 
one major use we already talked about and that is ammonia we have already talked about ammonia but the second major use is in the refining industry where we use for hydro treating uh, and hydrogen is being talked about as a clean fuel of future so we are going to be seeing a lot and lot of hydrogen production in the future that's why we are doing this webinar so hopefully we we, we think there will be a lot more steam reforming furnaces in the future uh, for producing hydrogen hydrogen is a clean fuel uh, it, there is no carbon there is no nitrogen there is no sulfur components so that produce environmental risk it's a clean fuel i heard that japan is betting big on hydrogen and they think they may be able to convert your existing automobiles from gasoline to hydrogen by putting some kit you know so they are betting big on uh, hydrogen uh, 